Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Yelena. Welcome to our YouTube channel and our tutorial today is on how to assist Supta Kurmasana. Before we go any deeper into assisting, mm -hmm. um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and um, comment. Let us know what you want to see, what you like. Uh, we read them, we react to them <laughs> <laughs> and like. Uh -huh. And maybe share. You can send it to a friend. Mm -hmm. There. <laughs> um, so we started making these assisting uh, tutorials uh, recently, and we're covering at first, right now, sort of the, the classics in Ashtanga. So these are the assists that we run into a lot every day. Mm -hmm. It's the poses that are assisted on regular basis if you are not able to do it on your own. And part of that process is, or part of that reason, is to kind of speed up the whole process of the way that the body, as well as the mind, change. Um, and it's, uh, of course, always done with consent. And we always, before we assist, we always check in with the person too. And even in the pose like Supta Karmasana, where they're kind of face down, we'll still tap them on the back and just say, you okay? And we're just, you know, we just want to hear, uh-huh, or... Make sure they're like, still breathing. <laughs> yeah, that they're awake. Uh, this is a, not an easy pose, though. And in, in, in Ashtanga, you would have already um, done the half primary series, like, uh, plus a couple other postures. So you're quite warmed up, and you've also been practicing for a while to get this far. Not, not just that day, I mean, but, you know, you, you have a, a yoga practice. So this isn't a pose for beginners. No. I'm sorry. And there isn't really a way to modify it for beginners because even the modifications in tradition don't exist. Once you get it, you start working towards the full expression of it. Um, but it's really important to note that you shouldn't just try to squeeze yourself into it because after all, we're trying to get our legs behind the head. And I think we sometimes forget that when we say, well, I'm just doing primary. In primary, we're doing all kinds of crazy things. And this is one of them, like, yeah. you're putting your legs behind your head. So this is really for people that are interested in teaching it or, or you're practicing with somebody and you're helping them, they're helping you kind of thing. Um, but the caveat is that it's, uh, it's you know, fairly, fairly difficult. So yeah. be careful. And the other rule that we have, um, but it's something for you to keep in mind, is that unless you are doing this pose yourself, you probably shouldn't assist it. Unless you're the yoga partner, <laughs> then you're at home and you have to help your partner and you know, you're just being kind. So that's a different story. But as a teacher, you wanna make sure that you know exactly what is the felt experience of this pose so that you can then really be uh, mindful when you're assisting someone into it. Mm -hmm. Pratyaksha, mm -hmm. direct experience. Um, okay, so uh, usually the way it works is in practice, you know, we, we do self-practice, Mysore style, everyone's going at their own speed, doing the same sequences in the room, then when a person gets to this pose, they'll jump into um, the first version, Kurmasana. They'll stay in Kurmasana for five breaths, and then they'll do their best to get into Supta Kurmasana. And sometimes they get into the full expression of the pose. If that's the case, you don't have anything to do. Maybe you just clap or something. But if they're not in the full expression, then that's when you're gonna walk over and assist them. So usually you wait until the person tries to do it on their own because the struggle, uh, you know, accelerates the change, you know, it'll bring, it, bring about uh, the ability sooner. Mm -hmm. if, if they're just kind of very passively waiting for you to, uh, to be assisted, then you, you kind of need them to at least start to try. And it does make a difference for you if you're assisting this, like we do, sometimes, you know, 30 or 40 people in this pose, and it'll break your back after a while if, yeah. if you're doing all of the work. So we try to get people to at least bring the arms around as best they can behind the back and the feet in as close together as possible before we help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's where we'll start. Yeah. Okay. 
maybe I could do that, um, the Kormasana assist too, first. If you, just a little bonus assist here. Sometimes, especially if people are having a, a challenge with this pose, um, it can be nice to give them a little bit of a stretching Kormasana here by, you, you put your feet under their ankles and then I'm just gonna slightly dorsiflex uh, so that my toes lift off the floor and that lifts Yelena's heels and put a little bit of light pressure at the base of the ribs and stretch them out. Does that feel okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right. So Yelena took her five or 20 breaths here in this pose and then she's going to walk the feet in a little bit by bending the knees and bring the arms around behind the back. We always want to try to get the hands to join before we cross the feet so that we don't collapse the shoulders together when we're assisting the pose. So Yelena's got as far as she's going to go on her own right now. Now, first I'll do the check-in. Everything okay? Mm-hmm. Want to assist? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So now I'm going to try to join her hands together. First thing I'll do is bring the feet in a little bit closer together, but I don't want to just bring the feet together. I want to get the legs higher on her shoulders. So I'm going to bring my hand from the inside of her calf, lift the leg up, bring it up the shoulder, and then bring her arm around behind her back, which effectively holds the leg in place now, higher on her shoulder. Then I can put my knee in her hand, she can hold my leg, and I can do the same thing again. So I reach the inside of her, like under her calf, lift it towards me, shift it higher on her shoulder, and I can even use this hand to roll the calf under, catch the elbow, and now I'm holding both her arms behind her back, squeeze them together, and then she can bind. She's easy. Sometimes you have to exert quite a bit of strength, you know, like uh, <laughs> to get the hands. Now, if they can't maintain the bind, don't cross the feet because you're going to collapse the, the shoulders and, and potentially injure their chest around the collarbones and stuff. So if that's the case, you might just hold them there, tell them to breathe, you know, and then over time, they'll get better at that, holding that. When they can hold it on their own, that's when you can move to the next stage. Next stage, I'm going to step over top of Yelena. So I'm standing just above her upper back, and I'm going to reach down, catch the outsides of her ankles, and lift her towards me. And this is tricky. See how I kind of bring my heels in towards each other, and I'm holding her legs with my calves. That keeps my hands free. Now I'm going to reach under and just roll the calves under a bit. Try to bring the right foot over top of the left foot and then I can bring her back down or I could keep her in the air if she couldn't hold it on her own. Once she's in the position, maybe she could point the feet. Maybe she needs to keep them flexed. And then from here I could lift her up to give her some space to get the hands down. That was pretty quick in terms of a description. <laughs> quick for <laughs> Didn't who? Didn't feel quick for no. you. <laughs> That's why I was trying it to do it not. quickly. We, we <laughs> have like a, a whole course devoted to uh, how to do these kinds of assists. And this is one of the ones that we build up to in yeah. terms of assisting. There's so many moving pieces to it um, and you have to have a good feel for it. So I, I know it looks you just move the arm, catch the hand, move the leg, cross the foot, but it, it is tricky. Yeah, it is tricky, but I, I mean, this is long, right? In, in real life, when we're assisting someone, we're not talking it through, so we assist. But the key is also don't rush it. If you're rushing it too much, then you almost don't give a chance to the person and, and their body to kind of relax and, and drop into the pose a little bit. So when you're moving everything, move it with, um, um, be sure of the way you're moving, but also move it like a nice pace, not a few times when I've gotten assisted, you know, the assistant gets nervous and then they move so fast, but nothing feels complete. Mm. And so take your time, but don't be like a turtle, be like a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have, like I said, uh, we have courses that teach this. Uh, 
well, let's put a link to uh, the online assisting school, which has everything you need to know about assisting, but uh, focuses a lot on this one too, if you're interested in learning more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do this with caution, okay? Be careful if you're, and, uh, and obviously stay in contact with whoever it is you're, just keep saying, are you okay? Are you okay? If they're not answering, they're not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go any further. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let us know and uh, make sure to subscribe, like, and share. Share, yeah. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.